Hello, Peter. Believe it or not, I made that just using DaVinci Resolve. No Blender, no giant puppet arms, although that would have been awesome. I made that just using the Fusion tab. I based my arms off of the ones in Spider-Man 2, but you can easily modify this method to get any look you want. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume you at least have a base knowledge of Fusion. Start at a Shape 3D and set it to a cylinder. Bring the radius down to 0.005. Can barely see it now, but we don't need to see it. This is going to drive our replicate 3D. Going to bring down the base subdivisions all the way down to 3, and bring the height subdivision somewhere between 30 and 40. Now add a replicate 3D, and put a shape 3D into that, and bring that to the viewer. Set it to cube, and uncheck lock width, height, and depth. Bring the width and the height down to 0.15. And don't forget to bring down the subdivisions all the way. This is a pretty heavy effect and we don't want to render more geometry than we have to. Now if we bring the Replicate 3D to the viewer, it looks nothing like a robot arm. That's okay. Set the alignment to aligned. And it still looks nothing like a robot arm. Calm down, we're not done yet. I'm gonna bring down the scale until you start seeing gaps between the arms. Then under translation, bring up the X until you have a little triangle on the top. We're almost done with the main body of the tentacle. We just have to fill in the middle here. Set another shape 3D and merge that over our replicate. Set the shape to cylinder and check caps on the bottom and the top. Then adjust the radius so that it fits inside of our segments. You may want to bring up the height a little bit so that it lines up with the top. Also bring up the height subdivision some. This will be important when we're animating it. Now that we have the body of our tentacle, let's work on the claw. Above our tentacle, Let's add a shape 3D and set it to cube. Again, unlock the width, height, and depth. Bring down the depth somewhere to about maybe 0.3. Again, bring down the subdivisions all the way. In the transform tab, bring up the Y to 0.5. This isn't really necessary, but I like to have it sitting on the grid. Next, let's add a duplicate 3D. Set the copies to 3, and then bring up the Y offset until there are little gaps between the squares. Now let's make it look like a claw. Add a Bender 3D and set the type to Taper. If you bring up the amount, you can see it's tapering each one, but that's not helpful to us. We want it to do to the whole claw. So we can just click Group Objects, and now it tapers the whole thing. Bring the amount to 0.6. Now add another Bender 3D. This time, keep it on Bend. Check Group Objects, and now you can see it's bending the claw, but it's kind of bending from the middle here, and we kind of want it to be from the base. So we just bring down the center, now we can control the bend of the claw with this slider. Let's add a transform 3D and bring down the scale because our claw is huge. Let's also add a duplicate 3D. Set the copies to 3 and bring the Y rotation to 120. Now in our transform, we can bring down the Z translation until the claws are separate. Maybe straighten out our claws for the sake of this. We can also control how open the claw is with the X rotation. Add another transform 3D and then add that to the merge with the rest of our arm. You can use the transform to position it at the tip of the tentacle and scale it appropriately. You may also want to rotate it to get it to fit. We've got the shape of our tentacle, now let's texture it. Add a Cook Torrents and drag it over here. I'm going to input this metal texture that I found on Pexel.com. I'll put a link to it in the description. Right now it looks more like concrete than metal, so we can fix that by going to the specular, bringing down the roughness. So now it's shiny like metal. We can also add a reflection. So add a reflect node, then above it, add a picture. Ideally, this would be a 360 image, but it doesn't matter too much since the reflection will be kind of subtle. After the picture, add a sphere map and put that into the reflect. If we bring that up, well, nothing happened. That's because by default, it puts it into the bump map material. We can just bring that out and drag it into the triangle right here. Boom, now we have a reflection. I'm just going to bring up the face on strength a little bit and bring down the glancing strength a little bit. After the merge 3, I'm going to add a replace material node and drag our texture into that. Just look at that reflection. It's beautiful. All right, we are almost done with the tentacle. We just need to add that little red light thing. If we add a shape 3D, that'll automatically add a merge. For some reason, it wants to put the shape 3D way over here. We can just drag it back, set the shape to sphere, 
and under lighting, check unaffected by lights. Now that'll make it look like it's casting light instead of just looking like a plastic ball. Now you can adjust the radius and bring it to the tip of the claw. Then in the material tab, we can bring the color to a nice red. Now we can add some controls to pose it. Add a Bender 3D, check group objects. Now you can see it's bending. We will bring down the center all the way so it's bending from the start. You may notice that the claws are bending with the thing. We can fix that by going to the range and bringing down the max until it's right there. Now we can control how much it bends with this slider here. Now you can keyframe the parameters to get a cool animation. If your animation isn't playing back smoothly, you can go to the Replicate 3D and just turn it off. If it's still not running back, you can also turn off the material. Now we have our animation. Let's add Transform 3D and center our arm on the ground plane. Then under the pivot, and bring down the Y so that the pivot's right at the tip of the arm. Set the Z rotation to 45 and then add a duplicate 3D. Bring the copies to 4 and set the Z rotation to 90. Now we have all four arms, but they all have the exact same animation. Depending on your shot, you may not want that, so there are really two things you can do. In the duplicate 3D, you can adjust the time offset. They'll still have the same animation, but it'll be a few frames different from the others. Unfortunately, this will significantly slow down render time. The other option is just don't use the duplicate 3D at all. You would copy your arm and then paste it three times and then give each one its own animation. Then you would position them into place and merge them together. This will look a lot better, but it'll also take a lot longer. So it really depends on how much work you want to put into it. For the tutorial, I'm just going to keep them as they are. Another thing to keep in mind when doing this is what's going to be seen in the camera. If you're only going to see two arms in prominence, then just animate two arms and leave the other one static. Now we can turn the material and the replicate back on and add a camera. A nice trick for positioning your camera is turning on the dual viewer, bringing the merge into both, then right clicking on perspective and clicking on the camera. Now in this one, we'll see whatever the camera is seeing. Another trick is using the target in the camera's transform tab. So that way it'll always point at what the target is, no matter where it is. This is kind of a side note, but POV doc arc arms look so cool. Once you have your camera set up, you can add some lighting. I like using a directional light. All you have to do is rotate it and the light comes from a different direction. But try to match your footage as best as you can. Then add a renderer 3D. Set the renderer type to OpenGL render and enable lighting and shadows. Under output channels, check vector. Then in the depth in the image tab, bring the depth to float 16. This is the, we can use one of my favorite tools, vector motion blur. Add a vector motion blur and right out of the box, it looks great. You always want to have motion blur when you're working with CG elements. Now let's add a glow to the lights. I'm gonna add a delta key here, bring our footage into that, and then just key out the red. On the matte tab, I'm just gonna bring down the high threshold a little bit. I'm going to bring that into the mask input of a background, set that to white, and then apply mask inverted. Now we can add a glow. I'm using the X glow fuse, but it doesn't really matter what you use. And just merge it over. Ideally, you would render this with alpha. If you can do that, do it. It's way better. But like I said in my Spider-Man video, it's never worked for me. So I just merged it on top of a green background and rendered that. For the composite, you want to film your subject on a green screen so that you can put them in front of the arms. If they move around, you can track something on their shirt and then attach the arms to that track. I do want to say, this method isn't a replacement for using Blender or Cinema 4D. You could probably get better results with them. This is really just a fun project to show what all you can do in Fusion, which is a lot. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below what is your favorite Spider-Man movie. Mine's got to be Into the Spider-Verse, but let me know yours down below. Also, if you have seen No Way Home, please be cool and don't spoil it for anyone else. Alright, I'm out!